Guys, the next update is coming because there are quite a few news about the evacuations, but also it seems like there's another earthquake swarm. Hey there, so this surprise eruption with only one minute warning time has caught us by surprise, I have to say. So what is happening? The emergency evacuations for Grindavik and the Blue Lagoon have started right away. And this time, my friend, the Blue Lagoon was faster than Grindavik. So the Blue Lagoon had finished its evacuation while the evacuation, they call it a quiet evacuation in Grindavik, was still ongoing. So the eruption took place at around 8.23 p.m. in the Nuka Crater series and uh, it is estimated that around 700 to 800 visitors and workers were at the Blue Lagoon when this eruption began. So the manager says the evacuation went well and the, she is thanking the guests for their good understanding of the situation and the employees for their quick and professional way of working. So I've always criticized their behavior of not evacuation evacuating in time but this time you know um there was not much information before i mean we knew we were waiting for another eruption but i have to say the last few days scientists have said well maybe the system's moving away somewhere else because it is really really strange that after the march 2nd event where we just had a tiny tiny magma run out of the magma chamber a small intrusion of only 1.3 million cubic meters that was basically nothing the magma started refilling right away in the magma chamber underneath sword sangi so scientists thought something's happening right away and then it didn't so they were thinking maybe it's moving to Altwerp, it's the land rise moving west so so um, we couldn't really know. So this time it did maybe not make sense to evacuate right now ahead of time because there wasn't really any warning. So they had no other chance. Should they have overnight guests in a situation like this with that much uncertainty? Well, you know my opinion, guys, about that. But since they had the overnight guests, they had no choice. They had to evacuate the moment the eruption started, basically like last time, although last time there was more warning. So no warning, but it all went well. Everyone is safe, and that's really, really good because the eruption is in an area where we basically have seen the December eruption already and the February eruption. So we kind of know how this is going to to behave. We also have already a statement from Thorwald or Thorwaldson that is um, a professor of volcanology whose opinion I value very very much and he's quite concerned about the little warning time that this uh, eruption has given us basically no warning time. What is one minute guys right? So that short notice for the eruption has really started to worry Thorwald or Thorwaldson and the lava which is flowing west towards the road Grindavikur Vegur. So the Icelandic Meteorological Office has sent out an, a notice that a magma flow could start or could be on the run and then basically the same moment the eruption already started. So that's why the notice was short to non-existent and Thorwald or Thorwaldson says, he says, this is a very short notice and this causes concern because we would have preferred to see this a little earlier, to know a little earlier. But he says, but that's the way it is and the magma has found it very very easy to come to the surface. So right now it is difficult to determine why the notice was so short, why seismic instruments didn't catch that earlier. We also know the theory if there is existing magma tunnels and dikes and fissures, the magma can basically sneak there and uh, unnoticed because it doesn't have to grind through so much. But imagine, you know, the location of this eruption is quite favorable as much as you can say because it's not too close to Grindavik, so it was enough time for people to um, evacuate from Grindavik but you know without notice and if it comes up so quickly right inside Grindavik for example chances were low for that but the possibility was existing then it's not good if people are in the dark they're in the town so 
thankfully this hasn't happened everyone has been evacuated there was no need for any um first aid stations or something nobody seems to be injured and i hope it remains that way the tourists are flocking they're they're looking at it from afar authorities are asking them not to get close to it but it's already visible from the main road that connects keflavik with uh reykjavik and and from Kikiana's proud and so people are standing there in the parking lots and they see it from afar so there are a lot of pictures surfacing right now and uh, you know the live pictures show the fissures have gotten longer the lava is flowing and now we have to see will this be a short eruption will it last a short term or will it last longer so the eruption is in the Sudnuka crater series as expected between Hagafell and Stora Skogfell, rather closer to Stora Skogfell, basically in a similar place where we have seen the February 8th eruption. And there the lava did flow very, very quickly towards the Swartzengi area, towards the protection dikes that are there in place to protect the Blue Lagoon and the power plant. But as there has been quite a bit of lava flow, as I said, it seems to be that this time it's flowing a bit to the east and somewhat stretching in the direction towards Hagafell. So towards the south that will be towards Grindavik um, and out to this area that's called Vatheitnia. So there seems to be less lava flow than in February but this is just a preliminary information because this is just at the moment less lava flow to the west but we have to see about that but definitely there is some lava flowing to the west guys. So what is most of interest right now, it seems this time we have to watch the lava that is flowing south, that is flowing towards the Hagafell area and then south towards Grindavik because there have been reports that the lava flow now is heading south and it is moving closer to the dike that has been constructed just north of Grindavik. And we know this dike has already been tested shortly. It wasn't even finished yet in the January eruption and some lava managed to break through that dike as well. It was flowing also over the main road that leads out north out of Rindavik, Rindavik Vigo. You can see it on the map where the old lava flows are located. And so it is approaching that northern defense wall of Grindavik. They have been working on that defense wall to make it higher. So let's hope that this helps. And uh, so that crack that is south of Skora Skokfell, where we see the current eruption, um, it is running or extending towards Sudnuk, and from there the lava is flowing past Hagafell and towards Grindavik. So, but the good thing is everyone is out of Grindavik. The Iceland Meteorological Office is stating that this is the current situation and that they're monitoring this situation and that they will release updates as they come. And of course, I will do that as well. And it seems that the new eruption, that new fissure that has opened is a little bit further west of the fissures that had opened in December and in February. So basically it's west, it's closer to the Swartzengi area. Um, but you know, right now the main concern is where is it flowing? What is it doing? Um, towards Grindavik, what's happening there. There are reports that that fissure is about three to four kilometers long. And uh, it, it seems that it is quite powerful. That's what um, people that are in close proximity that are filming and monitoring this um, are saying, and uh, they can hear the lava. It's quite loud. You can hear the rumbles. And there's also air pollution right now. This time it seems to be more smoke for some reason. So people can't really stay for long in the proximity and reporters, RUV reporters are trying to report about this, but they can't really stay in the area for long. So also it 
it took the reporters quite a bit of time to get closer to the eruption site to do a reporting with the eruption visible in the background because they are reporting that there are so many cars um, that stop on the road and, and film and, and it seems they're blocking the road, which is quite stupid, right? Because people need to evacuate maybe still. How People don't know if they're, everyone has evacuated, so clear the road. This is really, I mean, just don't stand there to take pictures and, and block the road for people that need to get out. So the smoke seems to be um, spreading east to northeast, um, also over Reykjanesberg. Lava seems to flow fast again. So they are reporting it flows rapidly south towards the defense walls and uh, also west towards Grinda Vigo and of course, as I just said, to the east. So basically um, it flows in, in, in quite a few directions and now we have to see which area is where the most lava is flowing, but we know if it's flowing towards Grinda because Grinda is on the coast, it's on the shore and we know the land is going down there. So it once it has passed Hagafell, so to think, it's really going downhill, which could accelerate the flow of the lava and then the defense walls are being tested as I just said. What they can say right now is that that fissure that has opened is bigger than it seemed at first so and it seems to reach all the way to Selinger Fell. So I'm wondering because there is more and more reports as I'm making this video this is basically a live report um, we're hearing more and more that it's considerably flowing further west than last time. So the report that it's only flowing east, I don't think this is completely accurate and the news will probably change about this. So west and south, um, that is not good. North is probably okay, but this is something that needs to be monitored very close, closely. And of course, as time goes on, more news will be available. And especially when the Coast Guard helicopter continues to fly over the lava field and gives a better estimate at where everything is going. Of course, the Civil Defense and the National Police Commissioner um, have decided to declare a state of emergency. Um, but you know, so far um, we have to see where everything is going. So also there are reports that the fissure is still getting longer. I just said it's three to four kilometers long as of now. And now we also have heard a statement from the Civil Defense from Vidya Reinesen. And he says the lava flow from this eruption is very fast. So very fast again and that's what makes it a little bit unpredictable so the fissure is right now it's shorter than the longest ones that have opened in the previous eruptions but there are two powerful lava flows that are coming from that fissure so right now there the civil defense is saying it's still difficult to say where the lava will flow mostly, but it is possible that it flows in the same direction as we have seen in the last eruption. So that would mean it will flow towards Sword Sangi, the power plant and the Blue Lagoon again, and maybe test the defense walls there, or at least cross the road again. Hopefully they are better prepared this time for their hot water pipes, because last time the hot water pipes were damaged so that the heat from the Sword Sangi power plant could not reach neighboring and, and um, villages and towns um, on the Reykjanes Peninsula. So some many people were without heat for about five days because they're using that hot water to heat their homes. So they don't have gas or anything. So what Vida Reinesen says that there is an, another, another lava flowing to the west and another very powerful lava is flowing to the south and it seems to have reached the northern edge of the lava that did flow in January. So it has already reached the same area and it is heading east of the defense walls and it could reach the defense walls. So the defense walls, that's what they're reporting and that is really, really good thanks to these heroes that have been working non-stop on these defense walls. The defense walls have reached their full height and Vida Reinesen says he expects the defense walls to hold up well. So based what we can say, based on the current lava flow, the road Grinda Vico Vigo could be in danger 
again and it has to be determined at what spot maybe at two spots this time maybe at, in, at the front at the doorsteps of Grindavik again and maybe as well in Swartzengi again so guys stay tuned for another update I'm basically giving you a live update with these videos I record them I just shortly edit them so that I cut out when I talk <laughs> weird stuff so and then basically you'll get the latest updates right away so stay tuned please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you're informed right away when the next video is coming and if you could leave this video a like that would of course be awesome and thanks so much for watching guys stay safe and i'll see you very very soon with the next video bye bye